What is object-oriented programming? What are the main principles of OOPS? These might look like some of the same questions asked in every job interview. But let me tell you, I have been on both sides of these questions multiple times in my 10 years of career. And now I can confidently say that OOPS is one of those topics that is so frequently asked that you cannot allow yourself to not know about it. The takeaway from today's video will be what is object-oriented programming, why it became so popular and how it came into existence. So do not skip any part of this video and watch it till the end. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Sonia and today I'm going to talk about object-oriented programming, which is the most fundamental concept of the commonly used languages like C Sharp, Java, Python, etc. A strong understanding of these concepts can act as a big differentiator between a good and an average programmer. So let's get started. But hold on, before we go deep into the object-oriented programming, let's first understand why and how it came into existence. The predecessor for object-oriented programming was the procedural programming. The procedural programming, as the name suggests, is all about writing functions, routines, or subroutines. The procedural programming was used by languages like C, Fortran, Kubol, etc. from as early as the 1960s. Simply put, the procedural programming is a set of instructions given to the computer to perform the task at hand step by step. So, if I need to add two numbers, I will write a small function that takes two numbers as its input and returns the sum of the two numbers. But procedural programming had certain drawbacks, which led to the advent of the object-oriented programming. To understand the differences between the procedural programming and the object-oriented programming, we will solve a real-world problem by writing the code. Problem specification given to us is that we need to calculate the distance for two vehicles based on their rotations per minute and the time they have traveled for. In procedural programming, we will think in terms of achieving the task at hand, which is to calculate the distance. So, I have written a small function that calculates the distance based on assigning the RPM to each of the vehicles and then multiplying this RPM with the time traveled. The time I have taken is one hour, which is 60 minutes. Let's say the problem has changed and a new vehicle has been introduced, which is a scooter. For the scooter, I will have to change my existing function and introduce an if condition. The already tested code will now get modified and a new condition will be added, which will have to be retested again. Let's assume that the specification has changed again and a new vehicle has been introduced for which we are not using the RPM into time calculations, but a new calculation that is to multiply the speed in meters per second with the time in seconds. I cannot anymore use my existing function and I will have to write a new function altogether to achieve this task. I hope you can see the limitations of the procedural programming with this example. One, we cannot extend the ex existing code. We have to either modify and retest the functions or create new functions altogether. We also note that procedural programming might look like it's easy to conceptualize because we are concentrating on achieving the task at hand when the problem specifications change the code becomes too lengthy, complicated, and is not at all comprehensible. The object-oriented programming overcomes the drawbacks of the procedure programming. It is the programming paradigm that organizes software around objects and classes. Now, what is an object? An object is any real-world entity that you see around yourself. In this video, you can see me, this board, this pen, and this plant. All of these are objects because they exhibit certain properties and perform certain tasks. I, for example, as a person can have properties like name, age, gender, and can behave by talking, walking, and eating. Similarly, this plant can have properties like length, color, name, 
and can have behaviors like growing. Now what is a class? A class is a blueprint or a model that is used to instantiate or create objects. It does not exist physically. A very simple example is when we construct a house, we first create a house model or a house blueprint and then using the same blueprint, we construct our actual house. Here, the blueprint of the house is the class and the actual constructed house is the object. Using the same blueprint, we can create any number of houses. Similarly, using the same class, we can create any number of objects. Now going back to our original problem, where we had to calculate the distance traveled for the vehicles, in object-oriented programming, we will think in terms of entities and objects. So our object is the vehicle, and I have created two classes, the car and the bicycle, for those two objects. The car and the bicycle have their own properties of RTM and have their own calculate distance method. When a new vehicle scooter is introduced, I will just have to create a new class for the scooter with its own RPM property and its own calculate distance method without changing the existing code. Similarly, when the problem changes and for a new vehicle, we have to have a new calculate distance formula, we just have to create a new truck class and it will have its own calculate distance formula of speed into time. Thus, we realize that without changing our existing code, we are able to extend the code. And this is what OOPS provides. OOPS provides a more organized, reusable and maintained code. It follows the try method approach, which says, don't repeat yourself. It also guarantees security of data by preventing unwanted access to the data. In the next video, we are going to discuss the four pillars of OOPS, though that are polymorphism, encapsulation, inheritance, and abstraction. If you have any questions or clarifications, please put them in the comment box, and we will try to solve them as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.